From Groot slang to Shang Yang, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else. That is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Jordan Dahl. Hello. We have Marina Mastros. Hi, thanks for having me. Hello. And we have Trisha Hirschberger. Hello, I am stoked to be here. We're stoked to have you here. This is actually an episode that that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I've held off because uh, it is a little tricky sometimes dealing with uh, folklore because there's there's a thin line sometimes between like folklore and religion and uh, and uh, deeply held cultural beliefs. And of course, we like to poke a little fun on the show sometimes. And it's like I don't want to get down the trail of like actually making fun of people for for beliefs they enjoy. But uh, that is all to say. This comes from a place of uh, a deep love of monsters. And some of these questions will get into this stuff from oblique angles to try to be as respectful as possible. Um, but hopefully- If you cross I, the line, we'll tell you to go fuck yourself. I, yes. Honestly, that's not a bad, that's not a bad rule. Uh, <laughs> just live right now, like immediately <laughs> accountable. It's like, hey, you fucked up. Because <laughs> the, the internet's gonna do it anyway. So we might as well just have a record of it. It's like, I know, Guess I what, fucked crap. up. <laughs> now we're playing a new game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll jump right into the game. The If you're just joining us, the rules are very simple. Uh, I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements uh, and it is up to our uh, contestants here to find what is wrong, buzz in and correct me. The only uh, only caveat here is that you must precede all your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't say, um, actually, I won't give you the point. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. If you spot what's wrong, just as in real life, you don't have to wait for me to finish. You can just say, <laughs> just prove that you're better and smarter than me. So we'll move on to our first statement here. The first edition of Monster in My Pocket Toys were small figurines of 48 fictional creatures. Some come from mythology and folklore, like the Chimera or Baba Yaga, while others came from literature, like the Phantom, the Invisible Man, and Frankenstein's monster. Jordan is buzzed in. Um, actually, the first monster you said wasn't included in the first series of Monster in My Pocket. The Chimera? The Chimera. That was in the first series of Monster in My Pocket. I'm sorry to say. Sorry to say. Um, actually, it's not 48. Nope, that number is correct. That is the, that is Fuck the fact you. number. <laughs> hey, all right, I deserve it. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, the Chimera is not from folklore. Uh, the Chimera is from folklore. Jordan is, is making a big old, oh no face. Uh, oh. I uh, think she might be right. <laughs> uh, Marina is buzzed in. Um, actually, they're not fictional. <laughs> you're close enough. I'm going to give it to you. The answer we're looking for is that they're not all fictional. Uh, you're close enough there. Um, uh, certainly, some of them are, but for sure, one of the uh, one of the monsters included in the original series was the T Rex, which was real. Uh, uh, yes. That is definitely real. You could allegedly. Also- Allegedly, uh, you could all, they could be you know uh, just bones planted by the devil to try to trick us <laughs> and prove that that's not the case. Mm-hmm. This is also uh, a, a good question, sort of like uh, kind of get obliquely into what I mentioned at the, at the top, which was a monster in my pocket ran into some uh, a little bit of controversy because they included in their line they had the beast from the Book of Revelation in there. Mm. They also had Ooh. Kali from Hindu uh, from 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 Hinduism, and it was like, hey. Uh, and like later lines also had like Ganesh. Right. And it's like don't right. don't call Ganesh a monster. Like yeah. <laughs> that's that's a god. What are you doing? Uh, they had they yeah. had Jesus in there. I yeah. think in the fourteenth <laughs> season, uh, which was a weird a weird choice. But you know it was battle Jesus. He was like hurling fire. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, posed like <laughs> yeah. Him and the Pharisees just going at it. <laughs> Dracula, Frankenstein, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the moon landing is one of the characters. <laughs> Final point here, uh, for no extra points, but just curious. Does anyone know uh, uh, one of the monsters was um, uh, the Phantom from the Phantom of the Opera? Uh, mm. Does anyone know, the, uh, in the book, the Phantom actually has a name, though he doesn't in, uh, in the Ooh. musical. Does anyone know the Phantom's name? Brandon. Todd. You're, I mean, it is at that mundane. Uh, the Phantom's real name is Eric. Eric, Eric. Oh, Phantom. Eric. Uh, Eric. <laughs> have it. Why is there why is there a mask in the hamper? Were you I'm ashamed of my, I'm ashamed of the way I look. You're handsome. No, You're no, Phantom. I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna go drop a chandelier on someone. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that, Eric. <laughs> well, that point will go to Marina uh, for identifying that not all these monsters were fictional. Oh yeah, okay. I was like, for Todd. <laughs> yeah. For Todd. <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to our next statement here. The Epic of Gilgamesh is an ancient epic poem about Gilgamesh, the half-god king of Uruk. 
After the death of his friend, the hairy wild man Enkidu, Gilgamesh seeks the secret of immortality from Utnapishtim and his wife, the only mortals ever granted immortality by the gods. Jordan is buzzed in. Um, actually, the gods also granted immortality to Ronnie James Dio after he <laughs> wrote the song Holy Diver and became immortal. It was Utnapishtim, right. his wife, and then long stretch of time <laughs> and, and then run into the studio and now uh, no, they all hang out together uh that's not the answer i'm looking for no but if you you know if you want to write that pilot I, i'd read it you know it's written i'm trying to get some, <laughs> some, some excitement behind it <laughs> um actually those were not the only two humans granted immortality by the gods that that is not correct no it, 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 for, or during the myth that is it i'm actually uh gilgamesh is not a half god he's a full ass god ooh you are close i'm just gonna go go ahead and give you the point you found what's wrong oh. which is that okay. he is uh he's not a half god he is very confusingly two-thirds of a god <laughs> oh my god and i know that and... sounds picky but one it is wow. explicitly said mm -hmm. he's two-thirds god and two yeah. that makes no fucking sense mathematically <laughs> like the yeah. way genetics works if you Look, can figure out how he's two-thirds hey, of a god we don't know how gods like to fuck maybe it takes three of them <laughs> the idea was that like he's more than a demigod it's not like 50 50 mm -hmm. he's definitely more god uh. than man there are a lot of demigods kicking around. But yeah, this, yeah, come yeah, up, yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is the one you want. And if you're like 50 50, it's like, well, you're as much a god as a person. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, no. He's definitely mostly god. Um, well, that point uh, will go to Marina and we'll move on to our next one. <laughs> I deserve none of these, but I will take them. That's the game. <laughs> Getting our asses beat by default, which is yeah. the worst way. Yeah. 100% we are. Uh, here's our next statement. Some Pokemon are completely original, but many others are inspired by mythological creatures. Some examples include Golem, inspired by Jewish folklore, and whose specific appearance mirrors the Golem from the film The Emperor and the Golem, Drowsy, based on the Baku from Japanese and Chinese folklore, and Sableye, based on the Hopkinsville Goblin alien sighting in Kentucky. Uh, Jordan uh, and Marina have both buzzed in. We'll do Jordan first. Um, actually, mm. the Drowsy is not from uh, Eastern... Asian mythology, but more South American. How about that? That's a really good <laughs> guess uh, because uh, Drowsy does look like a taper. Does. Um, but uh, uh, it is based on uh, ba the Baku, which also looks like a taper. And in fact, I think Whoa. in in uh, in Japanese, the, like the word for taper and the word for this creature are the same Ooh. because they this oh, creature already existed and then they found tapers. And it was like, holy shit, <laughs> oh it's that God. thing we've been talking about. The thing <laughs> yeah. that eats your dreams that lives in Where? South America. <laughs> Um, actually, that's not the name of the movie. <laughs> the name of the movie is My Gollum and Me. <laughs> Starring Billy Crystal and yeah. Danny DeVito. We're yeah, going to have yeah, yeah. 10 movie ideas by the time this episode <laughs> is over. And I hope someone's writing these down because they're all gold. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That No, no, that's not correct. The movie is The Emperor and the Golem. But, um, actually, the answer is that the appearance of the golem was not influenced by that film, which is of that name. Very good guess. Again, incorrect though. Come so on. you're in the you're in the right space. What we're looking for is that the uh, Pokemon Golem, uh, in fact, looks nothing like the golem from uh, the Emperor and the Golem. There is a Pokemon called Golurk that does look almost exactly like the golem from the I, the I Emperor got, and the I Golem. I gotta say, um, yeah. actually. Isn't that what I said? The appearance of that golem is not influenced by that movie. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess what I was look, I was, you know what, Jordan, you're right. I will give you a point. Yes. 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 I'll give you a point for that. Default. I was mostly hoping for the fact that golem doesn't look anything like a golem, but in a roundabout way, in a sort of syllogism, yes, you are I'll, correct. I'll that, take that, it. Roundabout. We'll take it. That's, uh, that's my shape. Well, great. Well, that will bring us to our uh, next question, which is a fan-submitted question. This comes to us from one of our viewers uh, who heard we were doing a Monsters, Myth, and Folklore episode and sent in this question. In a prideful competition to please the gods of Asgard, the dwarf brothers Broker and Atri managed to forge three mythical creations. To Odin, they gave the Golden Ring Drapnir, which can multiply itself every ninth night. To Thor, the flawless and iconic Mjolnir. And to Frey, a gold-maned boar named Gullinbursti. Uh, Trisha. Um, actually, it was not a prideful competition. <laughs> there was, everyone was deeply ashamed of the work they had done. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I made a thing. I don't know. Check it out <laughs> if you want. In a cooperative manner. They yeah. just love for 
I don't know. It's gold and it reproduces itself or whatever. I don't know. This is dumb. Yeah. Um. Actually, they made four, not three. Ooh. Ooh. That's a great guess, but it is wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, Gulen Bursty was not a boar. Incorrect. Was a dolphin. <laughs> Let me finish. Right. It was a dolphin with a jet ski. <laughs> I love you saying you're, he's wrong and then being like, uh uh, you hold on. <laughs> you haven't heard what I have to say yet. I could be wronger. Let me finish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll say no points for that one. Uh, this uh, The answer we're looking for is that. Um, Mjolnir is very specifically not flawless. The handle was made too short. A fly, thought to be Loki in disguise, sabotaged the crafting of the weapon, and Thor had to wear special iron gauntlets in order to wield the faulty hammer. That sounds like some shit that, like, Thor cooked up after he beefed it on the first swing, testing <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it. Oh, the, the handle's too short. Yeah. short. I gotta wear I these bracelets. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I got the hang of it. Yeah, it was the, the bracelets yeah, 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 and the yeah, yeah, stupid, yeah. these fucking dwarves fucked up my hammer, <laughs> so I gotta, yeah. Well, no points to that one, but thank you very much, Francis36, for submitting uh, this stumper of a question about Thor Sorry and Sorry we hammer. let you down, Francis. Uh, this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game. Now, shiny <laughs> questions, like shiny Pokemon, are worth the same number of points, they're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. So this is a little mini game that we're calling Chimerical. A lot of monsters in folklore are just kind of made from smashing two other things together or three other things together or eight other things together. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a series of slides. Each slide is going to show you two things. We want you to tell us when you combine those things, what monster do you get? Oh, okay. I love this. Uh, let's take a look at that first chimerical monster. What do we have here? A human and a donkey. Uh, Marina. Minotaur. Oh, interesting. Uh, no, that is also not what that would be. Cool, 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 uh, cool, cool. not what we're looking for. Uh, is it a satyr? It is not. That's a very, that would be a human and a goat. I have a guess of what this animal is called. I want to say like Astor or something, but that's too <laughs> simple. I'm going to go with this is a creature called donkey. Hote. Sorry. <laughs> See? Exquisite. What did As I tell you? Astor and Donkey Hote are both great guesses. <laughs> great. None of them are correct. Let's take a look at what the answer should be. It is an Ono Centaur, which uh, oh, adheres no. the craziest image of an Ono Centaur. Uh, all right, let's take a look at our next ingredients here. This is a chicken and either a snake or a lizard. Uh, Jordan is buzzed in. Um... Uh... Actually, this is the cockatrice, I believe. That is correct. This is the wow. cockatrice. Wow! Cool. Trisha, this looks like straight out of a D&D book. It does. I'll use it in my next adventure. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. Well, it also, what, it's famous for having a deadly gaze. If you looked at it, you would oh. die. Or sometimes yes. turn to stone, but yes. I think mostly just die. Cool. Let's take a look at these next. Uh, Jordan is quickly buzzing again. I know this guy. This is from my home state, unless it's some sort of weird variation that I don't know about. I've seen these on many truck stop walls as I have pounded fried onions. This is a jackalope, y'all. That's a jackalope. Yeah, jackalope. that's what it is. Here's your little cool. jackalope. Very nice. Look at so majestic. <laughs> Got to get some American cryptids in here. Interesting factoid about the jackalope. They think that there's a thing called uh, lagomorphic papillomavirus, which causes hairs to become covered in these horrible horny growths. And mm. they think that that might have informed the original settlers who were like, I've seen a, a, a jackrabbit with, <laughs> with horns. So I was drinking for two days, but I saw <laughs> this disease rat. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll flip to the, our next monster ingredients here. This is a cat and uh, either a lizard or a snake, depending on the uh, the conception of it. Jordan is buzzed in. I can't believe this is finally paying off. That is Aina Tatsulverm. That is Tatsulverm. <laughs> I thought that's, no one would get this. <laughs> that's Aina Tatsulverm. It just comes to me at last. Uh, the Tatsulverm. Uh, Jordan, I, I know almost nothing about the Tatsulverm, except it was like, that's what, one I haven't really heard of before, so the I just put through it in here. Worm. The Tatsulverm is a German folkloric kind of uh, Bigfoot cryptid, I suppose you would call it. Mm. It's more folkloric than it is a cryptid, but it's kind of a snake cat <laughs> that has, <laughs> it's got the back half of a snake and the front half of a cat, and I think it means claw worm because it's, <laughs> it has front arms that are very much a cat, apparently. Wow. Is, is this that just your classic, thing. like, terrorized farmhouses kind of monster, or is there you anything know, like... 
I think it's like an alpine situation where it like lives <laughs> in the snow and it like it like steals chickens and and like oh. lonely hikers. Wow. Oh. They are in D and I think you can find a tassel worm in D and D. I'm just providing monsters for D and D campaigns. Totally. Like, throw this in there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at our next ingredients here for a monster. What is this? This is a dog plus a lion plus a hawk. Um, actually. This is a griffin. People don't know that griffins have a dog <laughs> tail. <laughs> they got the brain of a dog. It looks yeah. like a griffin, but if, it, <laughs> yeah. if you actually yes. like kind of cut them open, it's like, oh, they're all yes. dog on the inside. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, they just wanted no. to play. Uh, this is called a deaglin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is not a deaglin. I'm going to guess that it's a gargoyle because I have seen oh. gargoyles that look like all three yeah. of those animals. That is a very good guess. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. Um, <laughs> I was buying cool, it. Uh, well, go ahead and I'll, I'll should, I, it sounds like we're all really, you know, yeah. swiping around here. Uh, so there you go. Wow. <laughs> of course. Um, this is I believe this is like an ancient Middle Eastern um, sort sure. of like Mesopotamian type monster. Although this Sultan's... actually oh. comes from the depths of uh, deviant art and it engages <laughs> yeah. in a, a in a practice known as yiffing. Saltzman, do you, do you have? Uh... Uh, well, I actually know this one. It's Ara it's it's ancient Iranian folklore. Ooh. Wow. I could see this carved in stone guarding some right. temple or other. Oh. Totally. Uh, well, none for that one. We got one more left. Let's take a look at these ingredients. Good oh, God! Oh my God! <laughs> oh my this God. is a rooster what? with a peacock, with a bull, with a serpent, with an elephant, with a tiger, with uh, a deer or horse, depending on the imagination, and a human. Wow. <laughs> uh, Jordan, you buzzed in. Well, this is obviously the monster from the movie, The Relic, the 1990s <laughs> thriller, follow up to Jurassic Park, I believe, where it was made out of all animals and it used to be the scientist. Do you remember that movie? Very bad. I don't know this movie, but it sounds great. Uh, that is not what I'm looking for. Uh, it's very obviously a mimic. Oh, another Ooh. very creative guess, but i that is not what we're looking for. There oh, is a technically specific, accurate. Techni you could have guessed that for all of them, I guess. True, <laughs> like, true, this true. is a doppelganger. <laughs> that's also a doppelganger. That, nice that's try. a standard doppelganger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, don't worry, my guess is real dumb. So this creature is from the fourth sequel to The Fly when all of these animals <laughs> Get into the machine at the same time the on, same accident. Time on accident. <laughs> Again, you know, write it down. Let's write <laughs> it. Let's let's pitch this around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's. I'll go ahead and call this. Uh, I mostly just wanted to include this because it's. I was looking for the thing that was. It's like what what monster has the most mon uh, like animals in it? Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna mispronounce this. I'm sure, but this is Navagundra, an Indian creature. I, again, I, I I don't know enough about uh, about this to know whether or not it's like you know like an aspect of a deity or whether it's like more of a, a beast. But it is also combined in the way you see where it's like one leg of this, one leg of that. Back leg sure. of this. When back you're leg switch, of that. When you're switching off legs, you're running out of monsters. <laughs> what that scene in Toy Story when the kid like takes all the <laughs> toys and puts them together? Oh, the mutant toys yeah. walk out. Yeah, I mean uh. this guy looks cool, but it does remind me of that. Well, that that is that. Jordan, you were able to identify three of these: the cockatrice, the jackal, yes. and the tassel cool. worm. So that very nice point will go to you. All right, here's our next one. Slipnir is Odin's eight-legged horse, described as the best horse among gods and men. He was born after Loki transformed into a stallion and mated with the mare Svathilfari, a horse owned by an unnamed Rinthurs who helped construct the walls of Asgard. Uh, Marina. Um, actually, that's not the direct quote. <laughs> I don't know where it's pulling from. It's pulling from some mythology, but it's described as the best horse among gods and men, which I love. I love that it's, it's just so like, good. objectively, this is the, we, we, yeah. we, we looked around, this is the best horse. This is yeah. it. Um, actually, it was not a mare, but an octopus, hence the eight legs. Ooh, <laughs> wow. A very good guess. Uh, you've identified what's wrong here, which is that Svathalfari was not uh, was not a mare. So uh, I will give you the point yeah. unless someone can tell me <laughs> unless someone can tell me what it is. A filly. Uh, Jordan, that's incorrect, but you're on the right track. I'm gonna give it to <laughs> Trisha anyway. Uh, uh, so Trisha, I'll give you that point. Um, uh, it's not a different animal. Uh, it's that uh, Loki transforms into a mare. Uh, Svathofari oh. is a stallion. So uh, in, in fact, Whoa. Loki gives birth 
to okay. uh, Slepnir. Now it's kind of sweet that he wanted to get something nice for his father. Yeah, it's a gift. Odin was constantly like, when are you going to have grandkids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when are you give me a grandchild? If you want a grandkid, I'll fuck a horse. How was that not the religion that was on top, you know? How did that one not... <laughs> this, it's fucking... Every minute of it is gripping. <laughs> it rules. Uh, well, Trisha will give you that point for at least identifying nice. that uh, Spathofari was not a mare. Here is our next question. We actually have the taxidermied remains of some monsters because they only exist because of taxidermy. Gaff taxidermy uses taxidermy to create fictional creatures. Some examples include fur-bearing trout, a trout with rabbit fur, the Jenny Hanover, deer butts with eyes attached, and the white Russian shore muddler, composed of a boar's head with alligator teeth, a squirrel tail, and duck legs. Uh, Trisha has buzzed in. Um, actually, it's not a white Russian, it's just a Russian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that's incorrect. Okay, um, actually, it's not called gaff taxidermy. Good guess, but no, that is, that is, I mean, cool. they may have other names, but gaff taxidermy is like sort of what this sort of fictional taxidermy is called. Um, actually the deer butt one is not eyes on a butt, <laughs> it's horns on a butt. <laughs> uh, no, no, that is incorrect. Um, actually. Yes. There's, there's no alligator involved in the creation of the white Russian shore muddler. That is incorrect, I'm sorry to say. We'll go ahead and call this one uh, since we're, we're flailing around. Um, uh, the answer I was looking for is that the Jenny Hanover is an example of gaff taxidermy, but it is not deer butts with eyes attached. And deer butts with eyes attached is also an example of, ga of mm. gaff taxidermy, but they're sometimes called... Uh, I think like de butt aliens or something like that. Nice. Um, the Jenny Hanover is a uh, is a dried up uh, stingray or skate, and then it's carved oh. to look kind of like a demon. Oh Ooh. my yeah, god! So this is a Jenny Hanover, and the they're also called asquatches. The other ones that you're talking about, yes, asquatches. <laughs> um, and these That's are three different examples nice. of asquatches. There's no uniform way to make an asquatch, so right. yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's personal expression, you know. The, the one on the, the right one with the lips. Yeah, yeah, why does it have lips? Much. Well, that's yes. the butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, you're right, you're right. That is the butthole, you're right. You can see the beard is actually the tail. It's it's a it's a deer's butt upside down yes. with eyes attached, and then the, the mouth is the butthole. You know what's crazy? Wow. This question made me think of in the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh from like 1980. <laughs> <laughs> this question yeah. made you think of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh gets his butt stuck in yes, Rabbit's yes. house and Rabbit can't get him out. So he puts like antlers on his butt mm -hmm. and like draws a face on it. And I was like, oh my God, that's like, he was doing gaff taxidermy because <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is a fucking stuffed bear. Yeah, there <laughs> There's a picture for it. Winnie the Pooh, the original Asquatch. Wow. <laughs> That is going to be a messy shelf in a couple of days. There, <laughs> uh, well, we'll move on to our next statement here. The Gorgons are a trio of monstrous women from Greek mythology, Medusa, Steno, and Euryale. They all have snakes for hair, a gaze that could turn you to stone, and can only be killed by beheading. Medusa was killed in such a way by Perseus. Uh, Jordan and then Trisha's close behind. Um, actually, the Gorgons weren't a trio of women. Those three were simply Gorgons. The Gorgons were a race of monsters. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking I, I could be wrong, but I think it is that the Gorgons are these three. They are the Gorgons. Okay. Not all of them have snakes for hair. Uh, that is incorrect. They do all have snakes for hair. <sighs> um, actually, the middle one's name is, like, Sylvia. I thought you were going to say Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, go back. Go back, go back, go back. Uh, no, no, the names are correct. Uh, the answer I was okay. looking for here is that in the story, or as it's imagined, only Medusa is mortal. The other Gorgons uh, are can't, just can't, straight up can't be killed. Can't. Which is, feels like rude, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Like It's like, <laughs> you three, you're identical. You're like, you're all equally hideous and monstrous with snakes for hair and turn people to stone. And you can die, but no, uh, the rest of you are cool forever. <laughs> <laughs> like why did you, why did you get yeah. the short end of the stick? Yeah. That's not fair. What the hell? What did I yeah. do? <laughs> um, no points for that one, but that will bring us to our second shiny question here. This is a little game we've played before called Crypto Geography. So uh, the way this is going to work is we're going to give you the name of a monster, and we want you to be able to identify where geographically it comes from. Uh, oh. 
Uh, so like, what <laughs> what folklore? Where like what where where is it? I'll say that the closest person will get the point, unless everyone's way off. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at this first fella. Here he is. Let's see what you all said here. Uh, Germany, Canada, Australia. I'm gonna load up where we're from uh, and let's see what y'all think. From That's Brazil. from Brazil. Oh, <laughs> but it sounds so Australian. The, the sounds... Mipinguari's coming. <laughs> There's some weird monsters in Brazil. Like we've mm. done this question a couple yeah. times and every single time the Brazilian monsters are like, what the fuck sure. is going on? It's just children with backwards feet and uh, people oh. with stomachs in their mouths and stuff. It's like, sure. I don't oh like God. any of this. I think you gotta be at least like in, on the right on the continent, continent here. So I'm gonna <laughs> say, I, I'm gonna say everyone's a little too far away there. Uh, let's take a look at our next monster. You have China, Norway, and North America. Jordan being very broad with North America, but I'm going <laughs> to allow it because uh, oh, it is from Minnesota. Uh, this is from a book called uh, Fearsome Creatures of the Lumber Woods that was wow. about like, like lumberjack uh, tales told for around lumberjack communities. Ooh, the, cool. the slide rock gouger, the hoop snake, the horrible <laughs> hodag. Let's take a look at our next monster. Oh, that's Alan. <laughs> I know it's pronounced Alan, but I include it because I really like the idea that this guy is just named Alan. It's just Alan. <laughs> Alan. Let's take a look at your answers here. Uh, Marina has Hungary. Oh, Trisha <laughs> also has Hungary. Wow. And Jordan has Turkey. Uh, let's take a look at the answer here. Ah! That is the Philippines. That's pretty far away from all those, although I'm impressed you both get like Hungary. Not Hungary. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at our next guy. Vietnam and Australia and Kenya. Let's take a look at that map. Ah, this is Chile. Chile. Damn it. Uh, pretty far Chile. off from everyone. Uh, <laughs> big <laughs> old think, nope. Yeah. I think it's a big old nope uh, from everyone. So let's take a look at our last our last monster here. Oh, <laughs> what? He's, he looks sad. He's cute. I want to help him. <laughs> You have Central America, USA, LA, and Louisiana. Neverland. <laughs> this, is the, this is the crocodile from... From Peter Pan. No, no, Michael Jackson's Neverland. He had a crocodile. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at the map. That's from Wales. Oh. <laughs> from, the, from the UK. Yeah, you wouldn't expect to have a little crocodile yeah. monster there. Yeah. But there. To be fair, the author of Peter Pan is British. So uh -huh. <laughs> interesting. Uh, I like the creative argument there. <laughs> That's okay. Um, well, I think uh, only Jordan got a the who gag in the USA. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that was the only real uh, solid point there. So we're gonna give that point to you, Jordan, for that crypto yes. geography. Jordan. Skin of my teeth. We'll move right along. Here we go. Here's our next statement. Yokai are a class of Japanese monsters and spirits with a wide variety of forms. Perhaps one of the strangest is the Shirime, a humanoid figure with a featureless face, except for one glowing eye where its mouth should be. Uh, Jordan is buzzed in. Um, actually, I regret to inform you all that the Shirime's eye is in its butthole. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly... That's for real? Yes, yes. This is oh uh, exactly God, the type the of fuck? thing that, we, that we're preparing for on Werewolf Radar, which is my paranormal preparedness podcast. So yeah, I know, I know the Shirime. Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's right. Everything else ah. I said is correct. Has a featureless <laughs> blank face, uh, but one glowing eye where uh, where its anus should be. Yeah, um, it'll it'll turn around and moon you, and it has an eyeball where its butthole should be, and it's supposedly <laughs> hilarious. And then it runs away laughing. Oh my god! I thought you were making a joke answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's I thought real. you were bringing back the yeah. ear butt. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. Nowhere has stranger ghosts than Japan. That's so funny. I love that it's like. A lot of these monsters are like, they have this thing that's like, oh, it has no face and it will take your soul or whatever. Like this ghost is just purely for the lulls, you know? Like it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, all yeah. it wants to do is just be like, hey, you want to see something crazy? And yeah. it shows you its glowing eye and its butthole. Yeah. And then it's like, that was great. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Time to peace out now. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Oh my <laughs> wow. God. The guy. Um, well, great. Well, that point will go to Jordan. Here's our next statement. 
Anansi is a spider trickster of West African folklore whose stories spread to the Caribbean and the Americas. One of the best known Anansi tales tells how Anansi used his cleverness to buy the stories of the Sky God. The Sky God, or in some versions Tiger, agrees to sell the stories to Anansi in exchange for four fearsome animals, a python, a hornet, a leopard, and a fairy. When this is done, the Sky God also demands Anansi deliver his own mother, which Anansi does. Trisha. Um, actually, the fairy is not one of the four animals. The fairy is one of the four animals, weirdly enough. Like, all the rest are, like, kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, of course, like, yeah. these animals we know and love, and then it's like, and a fairy. Um, actually, the Sky God doesn't ask for his mother. Uh, that's actually correct. Um, oh, yeah. for Kevin Bacon. Wait, yeah. let me finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on, I want to be wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anansi does offer, like, uh, does end up handing over his mother. Sky God never asks her. It's just <laughs> oh sort of like, God. and I'll sweeten the deal here. I'll, you know what? I'll get you Anansi. those four animals, and I'll throw in my mom for good, for good measure. What the fuck? <laughs> Someone doesn't teach him how to haggle. It's like, no, 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 yeah, stop yeah, while yeah. you're ahead. You don't need to offer more. Sounds like somebody forgot Anansi's birthday. Either that or the mom was like, I don't know, he looks good. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, he's trying to set his mom up. It's like, yeah. it's the Sky God. You can't do better than that. Anansi, give my number to the Sky God. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell, yeah. Him, tell him I'm part of the deal. <laughs> uh, great, well, that point will go to Jordan, uh, perhaps, I guess, maybe not. But it's yours one way or another. <laughs> this will bring us to our last shiny question, last shiny question here. This is a game we're calling Mythological Murder Mystery. Uh, so people are killing each other all the time in myths and folklore. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you someone who died. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to identify who or what was the thing that killed what you're seeing. Uh, got that? So you're identifying the murderer, the killer. Let's take a look at our victim. The Minotaur. Who or what killed the Minotaur? Jordan has buzzed in. Um, actually, um, actually, <laughs> Theseus. That is Theseus, correct. Who or what killed Osiris? Uh, Jordan has buzzed in. Um, actually, Anubis? It's not Anubis. Is it actually Ka? It's not Ka. The answer we're looking for was Set. Oh, set. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our next victim here. Balder. Who killed Balder? Uh, Trisha's buzzed in. I mean, just for just for lols, but his gate. <laughs> oh, no. We all know Baldur's gate. That, that had to have been what killed him. No, no, sorry. I'm gonna go with what, and it was an arrow made of holly or mistletoe. Salzman, check me on this. I think that is it. I was oh. looking for the person, but you know what? That was specific wow. enough. I'll give you wow. the point. I, I skipped the person. Let's go ahead and reveal the answer. We were looking for Hode, but oh. yes, it was with a mistletoe wrapped uh, wrapped arrow. That's so uh, cool. Wow. Let's take a look at our next victim. Who killed Maui or what killed Maui? First uh, of Trisha. all, Spoilers for Moana too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, um, according to Moana, it was <laughs> Tafiti that made Maui go away for a long Ooh. time. Mm. Uh, that is not what we're looking for, no. Okay. Uh, but a very good guess, Marina. Um, actually, was it a volcano? It's not what I'm. It's not a volcano. Um, actually, was it Molokai? <laughs> it was not. Molokai. Uh, let's reveal the answer. This is Hini Nui Te Po, oh. who is a sort of goddess. Interestingly enough, the story is that Maui was trying to, I think, achieve immortality for everyone or something, but that involved crawling through Hini Nui Te Po, uh, through uh, her, from below, all the way through her body. Oh my God. Uh, uh, and she awoke when some birds saw this and started laughing and she crushed him inside her. Um, oh my God. Uh, so that is how Maui died, uh, through Hinanui Te Po. Hawaiian mythology, <laughs> going after it. All right, let's take a look at our next victim here. Who or what killed Humbaba? I'm gonna say, um, actually, a spear. Uh, no, no, that is incorrect. Uh, Jordan. I'm gonna say, uh, eaten by wolves. Uh, incorrect. Uh, Trisha. Um, actually, Humbaba died by a great fall. That's a, a good guess. That is not what we're looking for. Uh, Humbaba was killed, and in fact, we'll go ahead and reveal the answer here. I'm double dipping a little bit here from previous questions, but by Gilgamesh. Oh, <laughs> Old Bill. Uh, Gilgamesh killed Humbaba. That was uh, one of the first, first big things that just prove himself. Pictured here with his lap lion, Eric. <laughs> Get in here. Look what I got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Humbaba, come look at my new lion. <laughs> we got one more here. Uh, let's take a look at that victim. This is Yamata oh. no Orochi. 
who or what killed this? Uh, Jordan. Um, actually, I gotta go with my man Gilgamesh again. This got Gilgamesh <laughs> written all over it. He's just rolling around with slaughtering things. Uh, no, no, not not Gilgamesh here. Uh, Trisha. A very famous samurai. Hmm, maybe. Uh, that's a good description. I'm wondering if you if he qualifies as a samurai. Sauce was shaking his head. The answer I was looking for, we'll go ahead and look to the next slide here. I was looking for Susanu. Uh, Susanu is who we're looking for. Uh, well, Jordan, you were able to identify the Minotaur was killed by Theseus and that Balder was killed by Hode via a mistletoe wrapped arrow. So that point will go to you. And this Take will it. bring us to our last question of the game. Well, our last question, as always, concerns real life skills. This is not about monsters, myth, or folklore. This <laughs> well, is no. just something that what? could be valuable in real life. Amazing. Just a thing. No. Oh um, God, I'm not gonna have to talk to someone on the phone, am I? <laughs> Here you go. You need to negotiate a new rate for your cable bill. Uh, <laughs> Uh, here is your statement. Okay, you know how to defend yourself against vampires, but do you know what to do if you see a mountain lion? Most mountain lions will try to avoid confrontation. Give them space to escape and back away slowly. If the mountain lion looks like it's starting to turn aggressive, open your jacket and make yourself look as big as possible, but do not throw things at it. If it attacks, fight back instead of trying to run. Uh, Jordan is buzzed in. I think you're supposed, I don't, I don't think you're supposed to make yourself big. Um, actually, make yourself small. Uh, that is incorrect. Um, actually, definitely throw things at it. Um, actually, throw shit at that mountain lion. Yeah! That is actually what is recommended. Uh, uh, you should absolutely throw stuff as long as it doesn't require you to bend over, lose eye contact, or appear small, which will make you feel seem like easier prey. Uh, but you should try to avoid it at first. If it looks like it's coming for you, then uh, it's it's advised that you should try to appear to be a threat. So so what I'm hearing is that m my answer is the exact thing that will get you killed. Yeah, Correct. Well, Do not make yeah. yourself appear small. That don't, will make you look to be easy prey. Yeah. Don't get small. Don't fill your pants with friskies. <laughs> Grab a little red dot and get its attention and draw it over to yourself. See, that might work. See, that might work. <laughs> if you like lead it off into a canyon or something. Yeah, yeah. Ah, gotcha, bitch. Uh, well, that means that our final score here, six for Jordan, three for Marina, one for Trisha. That makes Jordan our winner for this episode. <laughs> Oh, how I have longed to hear those words. Internet points <laughs> forever. Well, that is it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to our contestants, thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. <laughs> <laughs>